tense, nice and inviting. It's quite a short distance from the start box. So you got to put your eye on your set of flowers that you want to jump over and make sure you ride really forward to set the pace for the rest of the course. Pick one of the flats starting with the flowers at the base and jump across the straight just because it's an oxter. I don't want to put too much angle of it. Also, we're heading into the woods straight behind it, so I want to be nice and straight when I land so my horse goes right away. Okay, this is fence number three on the course. We've gone into the woods a little so the horses don't know where they're going. We're also in the shade. We have to take that into account. We're going to make sure we ride positively up the hill to the middle section where the beam is so it fills the horse's eye. Other than that, this should ride really well as long as I keep my nose behind the pelvis. Fence number four on the course is another straightforward course. It's got quite a bit of width, and I'm going to make up some time here, so I'm just going to keep galloping on and head on to number five. Can you say something? Five A and B? No. Okay, this is five A and B. It's quite a good combination. We've got a skinny companion five side to B, which actually is a gap between a bank and a hedge that's been built. So you're going to be jumping from this level of ground over that brush with a little gap and then down on the drop side. We'll show you on the other side. So I'm going to ride nice and positive to the skinny cabin. Then I'm going to ride five forward strides to the base. And when I get to the edge, I'm just going to close my leg and keep my seat down a little bit lower and soften my hands so that when the horse lands on the other side, he's not too hard on his front feet. Also, you don't want to lean forward early in case they take a peek at the last second. Okay. Just to give you some perspective. <laughs> quite wide. There's a little bit of a pull up the hill. I'm going to ride forward and make sure I focus on the front rail so that he wraps around. Remember the highest point of the bascule has to be in the center of the two fences. <clears throat> so I want to make sure he rocks back and jumps around, but I also don't want to waste too much time here. Okay, so we have a really big log jump in. As I come out of the woods there, I'm going to give him a little tap behind the leg. Make sure he's in front of my leg. Then in my head, I'm going to count positively one, 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 one. And I'm going to kick with my legs and cluck to make the jump happen so he doesn't slither over it. I'm going to land and ride positively forward in five to the corner of the top, which is back onto dry land. So when they get to the top, you have to make sure you close your leg and make the corner of the top happen because they're going to see that you want them to go back into the water on the other side and they might be reluctant. Also, you have the distraction over there. There's going to be lots and lots of people and the trade fair is over there. So you're going to have to be careful your horse is paying attention to you. That's why you have to be assertive. Then another five strides directly to that corner with a little bit of hedge on the top. I'm just going to pick a slat as I go over the corn cob. Never take my eye off. Keep riding with my leg on my positive five and hold my train tracks up to keep my horse focused. Land and gallop on. So this one's a little bit harder to get to, but it is <coughs> more of a giveaway fence. So I'm just going to make sure my horse sees it from far enough away. I'm going to look at the front edge so he doesn't get buried in too deep. And I'm going to jump out, open my left rein, close my right leg so he doesn't slip, grow tall on the corner, and then once I'm straight, I'll accelerate on. Okay, so the straightforward route is up over this vertical, bounce down a bank into a sunken road, tight one stride, up one stride, and out over that very narrow panel at the end. If you have trouble at the A or you're not confident that you can handle the beginning part, you would take your horse and do this option here, track left, cut in where I am in a trot, step down this bank here and straight up the other side. You could continue on and try and take C if you thought you had enough momentum, but the bank down and up is going to take away and if you've already had to cut in here, most likely you're going to have to bow out without crossing the track going directly towards the woods on our right. So we're getting down to business here. I'll be sitting up. It's in the shade. I'm going to have my hoppity hoppity, using my leg, bouncing my beach ball, looking at the front rail, get in over this first, then sit tight, lower leg tight, step down, neat and tidy, package up, and on the one stride, I'm going to put my train tracks up and really create a tunnel with my leg to show my horse. And I'm going to aim for that gigantic tree back there as a focal point once I'm down in this sunken road. Okay, so this fence is a little bit new on the course. We used to have some cabins in the woods back there, so it'll be interesting to see how this rides. It is made up to look like an into space. I'll be picking a slat that's a little bit closer here um, on the lower side, just because I don't want to make this any more upright and in their face than I have to. 
I'm going to make sure that I present it with my nose behind the pommel and my horse rocks back and jumps it clearly. And then I'm just going to balance as I go down the hill with a wine glass on my head so that I'm not hard on my horse's front end. Okay, so here we have a skinny ditch and brush. I'm just going to ride it like I normally would any ditch and brush. Look at the front edge. Make sure I've got my line for my B element here. It's going to be a two stride. Uh, this kind of fence creates quite a wide arc, so you're going to land into the distance a little bit, which helps you. Just make sure you're tall, sitting up, and keep your eye on the front edge here. You don't want them to glance off left or right, so you got to make sure that you create a tunnel again with the train tracks. Close the seat and leg, show them exactly where you want them to go, and this should ride smoothly. Okay, so here you have fence 13. It's a nice, forgiving, galloping fence. Get their confidence back up before you head down the hill to the coffin. I think at this point I'd like to thank all the course builders and the designer. As you can see, every fence here is beautifully decorated and very, very safe and finished. Beautiful ground lines. I hope that uh, tomorrow everything goes really smoothly because of it. Okay, so here we have the traditional coffin. It's quite a big inn. Thank goodness they put the trees in to fill the gap and fill the horse's eye a little bit. I'm going to come downhill from that galloping on fence that we just finished and it's uh, getting, you know, midway in the course, so I'm going to make sure my horse is listening to my brakes. I'm going to test the brakes, uh, you know, 10 or 12 strides out to make sure they're listening. If they're listening, I'm going to continue riding forward, get my balance and my rhythm and my line five strides out, hoppity hoppity, a little bit more power than a show jumping canter, but definitely that kind of organization. Jump in over the A, seat low eye on C, close the leg and let the horse take care of the ditch, two strides out over the skinny, just making sure I'm aiming between the letters R and T. Okay, fence number 16, this one gives me nightmares. I'm going to make sure that I look at the front edge. It's in the middle of a field on the edge of a slope with it just asking you to run out left because it's a left-handed corner and the ground slopes away. Keep your eye on the front edge, hold your line. You have to be straight over this when they're open like this. They put those trees in there to help you keep your line and help fill this fence a little, but open corners are not my favorite. You have an option around the other side. It's very, very, very time consuming, but it is a filled in corner and a little bit smaller and in a much easier place. So if I have a glance off or I feel like the rest of the course isn't riding well, I'm probably going to take the long route and hop over that just to keep my horses confident. Fence number 15 is in the dark. It's a nice fence. I'm going to come up the hill, make sure I have my nose behind the pommel at the point of takeoff, and I'm going to head for that beam in the middle where my dog Gizzy is so that it fills your eye and the horse has something to focus on later on in the course. Okay, another nice galloping fence. They've been kind and put brush on here to make sure the horses give it enough air. It is a little bit wide, so I'm going to keep coming to it. Uh, this is a fence where I can make up a little bit of time and hopefully get my horse's adrenaline back up so he's ready for the combination of ditch and rails. Okay, so this is interesting. This is not what's usually here. Usually we have a table to a corner to a corner, so this will be new. You have ditch and rails, three flowing strides to ditch and rails on a slight curving line. I'm going to aim for the middle of the first and then slightly left of center of the second. Um, that gives me a little bit of playroom. So on a horse like Foxwood High, who has a very open stride, uh, I'll jump in and I'll put my eye to the left of center. And if I feel like the distance is closing and it's too tight, I can leg yield out a little bit to the center, and that will give him room to fit a nice three strides in. And with Solo, who's very accurate, very cat-like, very neat and tight, I'll jump the middle and I'll head directly, slightly left of center, and that will give me a nice three. Ditch and rails are really bogey fences for riders. As long as you don't look in the ditch, it's really just a takeoff spot for you. So make sure you're sitting up because there's no brush on the top, but you're going to keep riding your rhythm right to the base of the ditch. So we, here we have quite a narrow table, but it's very, very wide. So I'm going to use the hill to keep my pace, look at the front edge, get a nice jump in, land, and ride forward to the ditch and rail, the trichaner there, right to the middle and get a nice five stride. I'm going to keep a direct line, keep my rhythm coming, and use the hill to my benefit since they might be tired at the end of the course. So fence number 20 is in the tree line. That means you're going from light to dark. There's not very much time in the dark for the horse's eyes to adjust. Therefore, I'm going to be looking at the front edge of this, the front rail, to make sure that he sees it. I am going to make sure I set him up a little nose behind the pommel because it is later on in the course and I want to be safe.
Okay, so here we have a really big drop in off a little bit of a curving line. As I come straight to it, I'm going to accelerate one, 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 riding positively. Close my leg and make sure they jump in. They gave you a little bit of brush on the top there to help make sure the horse is given enough air. It's going to be quite a drop on landing. Make sure I land with my heels down and my head back, my hands low and soft so the horse feels that it can use its head and neck to absorb some of the drop. Then I'm going to sit up, put my eye on the frog there. I'm going to put my eye on his spots to the left closest to his head. And I'm going to ride forward. One, two, three. Keep myself in the tack until the horse leaves the ground and then follow through so that I don't get caught leaning forward early and have a silly mistake there. Um, also, you have to take into account there's a little bit of splash. There's not much drag because the water level is quite low, but you still have to make sure you create that canter in the water to get that nice three stride to get a good distance to the skinny so the horse feels the confidence to jump over it. So here we have another ditch and wall. Again, you don't want them to rub on the top here, so you are going to set their nose up a little bit at the base, but still, you're going to ride your rhythm right to the edge of the ditch here and fly right over. You're going to pick a flat. This one's convenient because it has a knot right in the middle, so that's where I'll have my eye. And I'm going to land and go. Use the hill to help get me to the end of the course and hopefully help me make the time. All right, second last fence from home. Got to be careful. Horses might be a little bit tired. I'm going to make sure I look at the front. Uh, there's not a lot of filler here, it's quite airy, so you've got to give this fence some respect as well as try and keep up on the clock. So I'm going to be using my head here and making sure I don't make a silly mistake. Okay, here is a friendly sight. We've got the last fence. I really like this last fence because it's got a lot of filler. Um, you've got a lot of decoration, lots of ground line. It's a solid looking fence. The only thing you might take into account is the overhang. Although it's very, very high up, on occasion there is the rare horse that does duck its head a little. And if they duck their head, you don't want them to wrap it with their feet. So just make sure they see it from far enough away. Take it as quickly as you can safely. And look up and kick on to the finish flags. I hope it goes well tomorrow.